Hey, and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time visiting, welcome. I am working on a 2002 Porsche 911 Carrera Cabriolet. What you're looking at here is about 20 years of wear and tear on this 2000 style interior. And if you're familiar with the 996 generation Porsches, then you're aware that the interiors were not really made with the best quality that Porsche had to offer at the time. Business was tough. They were having trouble making ends meet. That's why they developed the Cayenne as well as the Boxster. So here we are 20 years later and I need to fix this. It's looking really ugly. I've already fixed the ignition key cover as you saw in the previous episode. But now what I need to do is finish it up. I have a whole can of that gray spray paint and I wanna fix these vents. In addition, I also discovered some issues with the vent controls themselves. I'm not able to direct the airflow vertically or horizontally on one of my vents because something seems to be missing. So let's take a look at what's going on. Here we go, Project Pepper, let's fix it. I wasn't all that surprised and nor should you be to see mold behind your vents, especially if you have a cabriolet. What I failed to show at this part of the video is that I used the chemical cleaner, the same chemical cleaner that I used in the previous video, where it takes off all the grime and dirt that you may not be able to see with the naked eye. It's really important that you use an adhesive promoter when you're painting plastic. Without it, you might as well just paint it with watercolors because it's gonna come right off. I've always wondered what this thing is, and I found out what it is. It's actually the internal cabin temperature sensor vent. There's a little tiny muffin fan in the dashboard that draws in the cabin air to measure the temp. It's very important that you take the spray steps very slowly. Do not oversaturate the object because you're just going to create wrinkles or it's going to peel off. Up until this point in my life, I had never used a CAD software tool like this, so I had to learn how to use it first before I started designing anything. And it took me about a half a day to figure it out, and then start, and then I started printing the parts to figure out what's going to work and what's not. It took me about three tries. This 3D printer is actually my wife's. It's a Creality 3 version 2. 3D printer that's absolutely perfect for these types of jobs. You don't need to go and spend a whole lot of money on a really expensive printer when all you're needing to do is print some parts like this. So it worked out in our favor. The only real drawback is that this ender is pretty slow. It took about 30 minutes to get these two parts printed out. Moving forward, I only printed one and it took about half the time. I think it's almost finished. Woo yeah! The second print, as I said, I only printed one. However, one mistake that I made is that I didn't add any supports underneath the center part since it's thinner than the two circled or raised areas. So it kind of bowed a little bit there, but not too bad. I was making progress in my design, but clearly you can see here, it's still not right. Every time I tried to close the vent, the connector would pop off the ball itself, and I had to figure out what was going on. Come to find out it was because the inside of the actual socket is concave. So I had to figure out how to do that in the 3D software and that took some time. So after a few hours of trial and error in the software, I finally got it to create the concave design that I was looking for and I was able to print it up including the supports and that's what you see there with that crisscross 
in the middle. Eventually, once it's finished, I'll be able to scrape that off and have just the part left over. That messy part in the middle is supposed to be my logo, but I still haven't been able to get the printer to print out letters right. And here's the support that I was talking about. It was pretty easy to just to peel this off because it really wasn't connected all that well. And that's exactly what the problem was. Without that concave design in the middle, the ball is not going to pivot right. And what it's going to end up doing is jamming and popping off. And that's exactly what happened with version 2. But now it's working smoothly. So I think I'm finished. Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, I'm trying really hard to not have to take this thing apart because these uh, the veins here are not moving. You see that? And that's because there's this little plastic thin piece that clips onto each one of those veins and it's controlled by this right here. Unfortunately, this thing is plastic welded together it's kind of weird why it's that way so that I can take it apart and see what I can do. So the best thing to do is just to use a, a soldering iron. That's what I have here. I put a flat tip on it. I'm just going to melt those tabs, the black parts of the tabs off so it'll pop off. All right. It's not pretty, but I got it separated. I'm just going to weld more plastic on there and use some staples to put it all back together. It should be okay. Um, so yeah, I just need to get it the rest of the way separated and you know how it is. I got one hand holding the camera and the other hand trying to demonstrate what I'm doing. So let me separate this and then I'll get back. Okay. So now that I've separated it, it's not that big of a deal. I think I'm going to clean it a little bit too. It's only really attached in one in two spots here. There's a couple of clips here, but, uh, yeah, you can see that, uh, you know, it doesn't hold together very much. These Porsche cars at the time were not all that great when it came to putting, when it came to construction quality. All right, so this is what I'm talking about here. And I got to snap all these veins back in to make it work again. So let me get to that and I'll show you what I'm talking about and I'll get this damn camera to work. All right, I think I got it. There are little clips and they clip right into those, let me see. And then when you move it, you can see they all go together, right? And then this one here goes side to side by this little snap-in. So I think I got this working. And you're gonna find that a lot of the Porsches are like this, especially the 996s. They weren't really made with the best craftsmanship that Porsche has to offer, but it was tough times. It is what it is. I fixed it. I 3D printed the parts here. You can see this is version three. This guy's gonna work out great. In fact, let me demonstrate now that it's all separated what it looks like um, when it's working. All right, so there we go. So this is it. And you can see it's there's two pivot points there. And the problem that I was having in version two was that the uh, inside of the mating surface was not rounded or concave. So the ball joint had nowhere to go and it just would pop out. But now you can see that this is working great. This one, I can't even find the part. Pepper was in an accident and I have a feeling that that impact caused all of this, you know, to jar that thing loose over there and then to pop this thing loose and get lost or break, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. But there you go, there's that part, pretty cool. And now that I got that back, I can now weld all of this back together. And I'm gonna use uh, the stapler, I think, to get it all together, let's do it. Yeah, whatever you do, don't smoke that. You know what I mean. Okay, it is back together. It doesn't look great, but it is melted together and it will work. And everything is functional. Let's take a look at it. Get this thing out. All right, so let's see. Yep, yeah, see that works. 
Do they? Yeah. They're all working. You can see that. Yeah, all working and lateral motion. Yeah, cool, man. And open and close. I say this project's done. I just gotta get my car back and I can put it together. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this short video. I really appreciate you sticking it out with me. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Yogi's Garage.